Okay, so what is stimming? So first of all, everybody stims. It's not some special autistic thing. If you're clicking a pen, fiddling with your hair, fiddling with your hands, tapping your knee, that's basically stimming. But it becomes problematic for the public when autistic people stim because it doesn't look like the stims that everybody else does. It can look like flapping or clapping or finger movements or spinning, any number of actions like that. And what it does for the autistic person is it helps them to regulate either their sensory experience or their emotions, or it can be a way of expressing of expressing an emotion and it's something that autistic people can naturally do to take care of themselves and so I think that rather than discouraging autistic people from stimming what we should be doing is letting everybody stim freely. So I didn't used to stim, well I did stim as a child and then I guess I learned to mask and I learned not to stim and I've recently rediscovered stimming and I've found recently that if I've been in a really stressful situation like a shopping mall or you know something like that if I've allowed myself to stim freely and move my body the way it kind of wants to move I feel a lot calmer and I'm much less likely to melt down do you stim or is that do you feel like you used to stim is that something you can relate to I feel like I'm quite self-conscious still about how I present to other people around me I wish I wasn't I don't have any problem whatsoever with seeing other autistic people stim I think it's something that we should all be able to do freely without being judged but I'm just quite self-conscious, I suppose, of how other people perceive me. I think from a young age, I learned to mask um, my stimming, probably from, yeah, early years at primary school. Um, as I got older and my anxiety got worse, I did start to stim more because it helped me to manage my anxiety levels. So I would kind of use kind of fidget toys and I would move my legs a lot or I would fiddle with my rings. So I feel like I do, I do stim quite a lot, but just maybe in not so obvious ways. I think that can be a really comfortable way to stim for some people and I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to stim and that's definitely um, because I've had my diagnosis now for seven years and I would say the first three or four years that is how I stimmed kind of yeah fidgeting with rings and fidget toys and then I actually got back into stimming because I have children who stim and so I was watching them stim and sometimes I would stim with them just to connect with them and then I found that it felt nice. So uh, the advice that I would give to anyone who maybe wants to explore bigger stimming, sort of, you know, you're flapping and you're clapping and that kind of stuff, maybe even if in their own homes, is music is a really great like bridge between that awkward feeling and letting yourself do it. Would you recommend that? 100%. I think dancing and movement, I've seen a lot of success in that kind of helping to for the stimming and to kind of make people feel less self-conscious but also some of the the girls and females that I've worked with particularly have been very self-conscious about it and so we've worked in time in the timetable at school that they go to the toilet and they stim and they get a pass out of the class to, that's their stimming time and that's they can take that whenever they want so if they don't want to do it in front of people especially going through puberty and getting older there are there's got to be worked into the day because it's absolutely vital